Hey guys, what's up? Making another video. And uh, for this one, I'm just inking. I'm going to be inking in this piece. It's an illustration for a book. And uh, it's the superhero team. It's for the antiquity book uh, I'm doing illustrations for. Um, it's a team of mutants. I think they look pretty cool. And, um, just doing some regular brush inking. I'm gonna give some tips on uh, inking a piece like this. So a piece like this with a lot of characters, it's uh, the more characters, of course, the harder it is, right? And when you have characters, they're kind of overlapping on each other and stuff like that. It's harder to know where to start. In my opinion, I feel it's always easier to start with the background. Uh, you go as thin as possible, right, for the background. And then when you do that, you could kind of gauge how thick you have to go for the characters in the foreground, right? Because if you start off with a very thin line and then you end up using, a, you know, if, if you start off, like say you start with the foreground here with the characters down here, right? And you start off with thin, thin lines and then you end up moving to the back and you can't get any thinner, it's it's going to be a pretty difficult because in the background the lines should be thinner than the lines in the front you know line weights make a big difference when uh in perception like the first thing a person looks at and stuff like that like see here how like you could just you know it, you you could get looser when you start with the background first you know And uh, I like to stay loose with the brush because the main reason I like using the brush is the textures, honestly. There's also speed that comes with it. Like when you're working just black and white, I always prefer brushes. But when I'm going to be uh, painting over stuff, the brush texture is going to be lost. So sometimes I'll just use a pen. Sometimes, of course, I'll, I'll ink with, the, with a brush still just for the fact that, you know, it does, it's still, there's still some perks. Like uh, when I was doing the Mr. Miracle and Big Barda piece, that drawing a couple of uh, weeks ago, uh, using a brush, I was able to block in darker shapes faster. And doing that, I was able to finish it fast and, you know, finish the inking phase and blocking in of shape phase faster than if I were to just use a pen. That's why it's, you know, you got to use multiple tools and understand how to draw with anything because when you do that, it opens up more possibilities and more ways you could utilize different things and get things done faster. Right now, I'm just trying to get outlines in. Don't worry too much about the details. Sometimes I get lost in those. But right now, I'm just trying not to get lost in them but I still keep I, keep I still keep doing them gotta stop that because the problem with inking is that you can actually add I mean well the positive thing about inking is that you could add a lot more solidity to your drawing but at the same time you could also lose a lot of the fluidity and how good pencils flow sometimes. You could kind of lose that. So when you're inking, you just have to make sure that somehow you can conserve that energy from those pencils. This guy looks cool. I really like the design. The original sketch I saw for him was uh, he had this triangular beard and it looked cool. I wanted to try as best as possible to, to keep it so it doesn't get lost in the design. I always like it when the design for the character comes with something already. It makes it easier to add more to the character. You know? There's always got to be something about the character you kind of stick to in the design process. Some kind of character trait or some kind of thing that makes the character unique.
see here I'm just going to block in shadows and doing these type of blocking in patterns it it gives like this textury feel that I really like and then later on when I go in with like a, a thinner brush or a, maybe even the same brush I could just it, it, it makes me know like you know mistakes sometimes if you do them right they open up possibilities like when you're painting and you're just like blocking in trees you're not going to go in and do one detail at a time you just go bang 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 and you block in those trees with the brush it's the whole purpose of the brush it offers this natural accidental shape Trying to get that those textured lines. Sometimes some kind of rocks, for, rock formations, they grow in a certain direction, and that's what I want for the beard. Makes it look like there's some kind of like a. Uh, remember in uh, Earth Science, there's the metamorphic rock, and sometimes they have like a. Some kind of like a pattern that shows the way they they were pressurized, under heat and. Heat and pressure underground or just from heat from inside the earth it's cool yeah i think i remember yeah metamorphic rocks are the ones that uh form under heat and pressure but they've already been an igneous rock or a sedimentary sedimentary are just the ones like you know they just build up over their travel and weathering and stuff and they just you know they're just sediments and then igneous rocks are the ones that come from lava so yeah when you're drawing rocks you know it's good to know what, what kind of rock you're drawing. Yeah, this guy's name is Granite. And Granite is a, it's a metamorphic rock. So they're formed under high pressure and heat. So there's got to be like some kind of a... Well, I don't know if he's made out of granite, but you know. But you know, you got you got a kind of... Name implies that he's gonna be made out of rocks and stuff so it's gonna be rocky but yeah you see how here I even have to go over some of the line weights again just to make that head stand up and wherever you like you're thinking the shadows are gonna be that's where you add uh, heavier lines and more details. Sometimes instead of shading, just add more details and it makes the area look darker. That's, uh, you know, wherever there's going to be a lot of light, there's less detailing. And sometimes when you're adding the texture and add it in like a, cal a calligraphy type of pattern. I don't know how to describe it, but, you know, maybe even some dry brush. Uh, you know, that's enough for this video because I'm just going to be inking and not really talking much. But uh, you get the point about, you know, backgrounds and stuff. Start with the background, figure out how thick the lines are going to probably end up being. So for this guy here, I'm probably going to go darker lines and, you know, to make him stand out and stuff. And then as I go along, the lines will get thinner and thinner until they match this guy's type of line work. And I'm also going to try some other stuff out. Like, you know, I'm going to try to make sure that his body is dark enough so that you could see the lady here in the middle. Her name is Omniscient. Uh, she's a character that could, like, I think see the future or something. I forgot. But, uh, yeah, with dreams and stuff. And this guy's name, Link. But, um, yeah, cool looking characters. And, uh, 
yeah thanks for watching leave a comment subscribe if you're not already you know for more lessons or tips and you know if you want to watch some drawing videos and stuff and uh thanks for watching have a good day bye, -bye.